Welcome to our World News Update for June 24th, 2022. As I've said before, I don't watch the news. Most of the elements I cover here are from people sending us articles and keeping us updated with what's happening in the world. Every time I look at different articles and start researching what's taking place for these updates, I have to confess, it's slowly getting more and more alarming. Many times I find myself saying, is this really happening? I know I can't be the only one saying this. But once you decipher through who's relating reality and who's just promoting fear, you find that sometimes there's not much of a difference as the reality to some things are truly concerning. It just seems that things aren't slowing down at this time. To start things off, just this morning, in a 6-3 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, ending 50 years of federal abortion rights. So, what does this mean? It means it gives individual states the power to now set their own abortion laws. The authority to regulate abortion is returned to the people and their elected representatives. Almost half of the states are expected to outlaw or severely restrict abortion as a result of the Supreme Court's decision. Big cities are preparing for large protests to worsen as they've already been in motion over the past few months regarding this possible decision. While we view this as a major positive, it can also be turned into an opportunity to create chaos in the big cities across America. In our last World News Update, we noted how the World Health Organization would be voting on 13 amendments drafted by the Biden administration. These amendments basically handed national sovereignty over to the World Health Organization in regards to emergency health situations. However, the 13 amendments could not get the needed vote from the 194 member nations. There were too many nations not willing to cede their sovereignty to the World Health Organization. Good for them. If it passed, the amendments put forth by the Biden administration would empower the World Health Organization to declare a public health emergency of international concern or of regional concern without the consent of the nation in which the supposed emergency exists. Many nations, including Africa, Brazil, Bangladesh, Russia, Malaysia, India, China, and Iran, all express concerns about Biden's proposed amendments, with Brazil especially asserting it would choose to leave the World Health Organization entirely rather than allow its people to be made subservient to the global agency. While this was a huge win, this doesn't take away the concern of why so many leaders of nations, including President Joe Biden, was so eager to give up their nation's rights, to literally hand over their people to a foreign entity. Also, in our last update, we mentioned the threat of war with China over Taiwan. This threat has not gone away. In fact, tensions are still there and even seem to be increasing. As reported from DailyMail.com, China threatened the U.S. Defense Secretary with war. The Chinese counterpart told Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin that Beijing will, quote, smash to smithereens any Taiwan independence plot and will definitely not hesitate to start a war no matter the cost. China made it clear they are prepared to go to war in order to keep Taiwan from becoming independent. The report said Austin shared his concerns about China's recent behavior and military activity around the self-governing island. Austin noted a steady increase in provocative 
and destabilizing military activity near Taiwan, including almost daily military flights near the island by the PRC. While this all seems so far away, please know the United States has made themselves very much involved. Also, in the last World News Update, I noted about the food processing plants being burned down. Since that time, there have been even more. While the effects of this may not be seen right away, we need to understand what's coming as a result. In some areas, even the cost of eggs is rising along with everything else, of course. A farmer recently responded to why the cost of eggs and so many other things are going up. Here are some excerpts from what the farmer said just a few weeks ago. A bulk bag of feed last year was $185. Now I pay $430. I am gobsmacked at the comments on different channels about the farmers ripping off people on egg prices. Shows people are not paying attention to what is happening. Wake up, people. We no longer sell our eggs and will downsize our poultry again as we have been warned feed is going up again. We'll keep enough hens and roosters to increase my flocks again in spring for our consumption. Problem is, people do not understand how their food is produced. What farmers produce this year is for next year's consumption. I roll my eyes when I hear people say, there are no food shortages and our meat aisle is almost full. It's just fear-mongering. People using their grocery store as a gauge for their family's food security will pay dearly for their ignorance. Yes, there is meat in the stores. Now look deeper. Last year, low crop yields, crop losses, and hay losses across North America resulted in massive downsizing of livestock across Canada and the U.S. No hay, inability to get hay, or skyrocketing feed prices was the result of last year's harvests. Many small farmers were wiped out, and others can no longer afford to grow for market, both in Canada and USA. We kept only enough to feed our family, and many other small farmers did the same across North America. Now look at the big picture. That many animals taken out of production are not reproducing this year to replenish the market. Not enough animals to meet supply demand. You are looking at 18 months to raise up a steer. Don't forget now, farmers need to keep what they breed to build up livestock again if they want to continue farming. Feed prices make that unlikely. Many countries have closed exports of food. Same situation as us. Look it up. So no way to replenish the losses. It costs more to feed the animals than what you can sell them for. Not including your labor and transportation to market. Remember those fuel hikes. Farmers grow it, but truckers haul it to market. Are you seeing the true picture yet? No different with grains, cereal crops, cooking oils, etc. What you are seeing in stores is from last year's harvest. You will see meat and other shortages by August. Not enough supply to meet demand and no way to import to make up for it. So meat will not be affordable even if you could get it. Poor yields and crop losses this year will compound this disaster. So next time someone tells you there is going to be severe food shortages come winter, believe them. Ask a farmer. If you truly want to understand, look up Ice Age Farmer on YouTube. He has been following the man-made systematic destruction of our food production and distribution for over two years. After reading what this farmer wrote, it only confirmed many of my concerns. Then, I decided to look up the YouTube channel they referenced, Ice Age Farmer. He definitely put the numbers right in front of you. The link is in the description below for those interested. 
In other news, as reported on Reuters.com, the Israeli government is being dissolved. Upon passing preliminary reading, the dissolution bill must still get through a parliamentary committee and then pass three more votes with an absolute majority of at least 61 of the Knesset's 120 lawmakers. If that happens, the Knesset will have to set an election for no later than five months from the day the bill is written into law. The period will spell further turmoil for Israel as it grapples with rising inflation, Iran, and the conflict with the Palestinians. Also concerning Israel, as given by Israel365.com, for the first time since 1967, Judea, Samaria may no longer be a part of Israel. Israel has never annexed Judea and Samaria since the army won the Six-Day War in 1967. So, to legally enforce the law for Israeli citizens in that region, the government has consistently voted on an emergency law, or the Judea and Samaria law. This law grants Israeli citizens to enjoy all the benefits and responsibilities of living in Israel. But on Monday, the vote failed for the first time since 1967. The cancellation of the law has until July 1st to be reversed. If it is not, Israeli civilian law will not apply to Israeli citizens living in post-1967 Israel. This means no police, no health services, or civilian courts. The IDF would handle all legal matters as they control the region. A senior fellow at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security said, Any crime will be judged in a military court. He added saying that it would be a different country. If the law is not renewed by the end of the month, any Israeli resident will become a foreigner under military rule. In other words, martial law will be enacted in these parts, that being East Jerusalem and the West Bank. While this may seem like a small matter now, it could have huge implications in the future. However, please know this could all be easily prevented with the proper vote before July 1st, which I personally see happening. However, if it doesn't, then it won't be able to be voted on again until the government is reestablished five months after it's been dissolved. In other news, just this week, Lake Mead reached the level that's called inactive pool. As of the end of May, Hoover Dam was down 33% in power generation because of the water levels. That percentage will only continue to drop as the water levels drop. The lake is at a record low level ever since it was created in the 30s. Over 25% of Hoover Dam's electric goes to California. As it stands, the lake is expected to continue to drop through next year. This situation isn't helping with the overall energy crisis on the West Coast. Take all this into account with the predicted food crisis that could be just around the corner. I personally believe there should be an element of concern in all of us. As we can see, there's plenty going on in the world to serve as constant reminders for us to stay in prayer at all times. May we always be attentive to what Yahweh is doing and is telling us to do. We don't know the future, but we know the one who does. So let's make it a point to pray as we walk through our everyday routines. Make more time to read. Make it a point to invest more time into your relationship with our Heavenly Father like never before. That way, regardless of what lies ahead, we know we're in good company. Keep your hearts humble in Him as we all learn and grow together in His Word. Blessings and Shalom.